tonight would be more of kind of a tryout night for some of the younger kids. What do you think of what you saw tonight? Well, you know what, I, uh, if, you, if you look at the, uh, the overall body of work, I thought uh, the kids played a real strong game five on five. We had some good, you know, good looks on uh, the power play, and I thought the kids did a real good job five, or five on four felon killing. Um, you know, and everybody got a chance to play in every situation. So now we can sit back and make some evaluations moving forward. And, and uh, you know, it was an entertaining game. So uh, I thought the kids did a lot of good things, and it gives us a chance to get uh, to get to learn some of these kids in, in a game environment. How valuable is it for them? Does it, do you think it added any pressure to them with Dallas being in the building this weekend, and obviously their uh, the executives up there kind of hanging around the rink and probably watching tonight? It is, you know what, <laughs> uh, for some of these kids, it's probably just like going to an NHL camp playing that game tonight. Uh, they know what's going on, they, they, they follow social media, so um, I thought the kids responded real well. And, uh, and then the other side, I thought the kids have played you know, pretty well for Oklahoma City, so it was an entertaining game, and it just shows you uh, the depth that uh, both teams have, and some of the players that wound up playing in the ECHL, and shows you you can rely on, on some of those calls, but uh, they did a lot of good things that we liked, and obviously it's, uh, it's part of the game. Uh, Overtime's overtime, and uh, I'm sure uh, you know Max would like to have that one back. But you know, it's a good chance for him to come in in, in a situation and uh, you know try and close it out. It didn't, didn't make it that far, but in overtime, what do you think of that uh, seven-minute format with uh, and it'll change to three on three after four mi after the four-minute mark? Well, it was interesting. You know, uh, uh, Todd over there went three forwards, one defenseman, and you know that's something we'll experiment as we move forward. You know, do you go three and one? Do you go two and two? And you know, with the defenseman that we have in, in our stable. We can easily go two defense and two forwards because they have so much offense from the back. But uh, it's uh, it's an interesting concept uh, to go four and four down to three on three, and and I'm sure you're going to see the game really take off and, and be a lot more wide open. Does it add any strategy to maybe when it's close to the four minute mark, telling your goalie to freeze the puck? Maybe we want to get to three on three, anything like that? Well, you know what, we played it once last year in the Western League, and it was incredible. Uh, it was just two on one after two on one, and we saw it at Traverse City there for a few minutes. But uh, it's. Uh, you know, I'd rather see the game decided probably in, in a three-on-three three or four-on-four four situation than going to a shootout because then everybody plays a part in it. Coaches play a part, the players play a part, and it comes down to more that you know finish the game the right way. Did you? What did you see out of the uh, the top line there, Peter uh, Smith, Shrook, and Smith tonight? Well, you know what? I thought they worked hard. I thought they uh, they responded on the power play with a big goal, and then they uh, they did a great job penalty killing, and you know they uh, they rose to the occasion. So it's a good chance for them to showcase. Obviously, they want to play a little higher in the lineup, and. If you look at the group of players that we have coming back this year, it's a pretty strong team. So um, this is a great chance for them to showcase themselves in, in, a, in, a, in a big spotlight. First game action here for Julius Honka. Had him playing in all situations. What was your evaluation of him? Well, you know, Julius is a special player. You saw what he can do. And, you know, the biggest thing for him is he's going to learn it. it's not junior hockey anymore. It's going to take a step. The pace is going to be a step quicker. And he's got to let the puck do the work sometimes. And I think that's uh, probably one of the biggest keys for a lot of junior players is you can't hold on to it as long. you got to move it, distribute it, jump in the hole to get it back. And, you know, we see a little bit out of uh, Jamel Smith tonight. He wanted to go to the toe drag instead of pushing it back or making a, an early play and support the puck and get it back. But Julius is a special player, and he's a player that we're going to have to uh, just, you know, there's going to be a lot of teaching involved. His learning curve is going to be steep, and uh, obviously he's got a high uh, skill level. With the scrimmage tomorrow and then game again on Sunday, what's your timeline for releasing tryout guys or letting them know that they've made it here? Well, for us, uh, tomorrow is the, the victory green game for the Dallas Stars. So some of our guys will play in that game, and then we'll set our lineup for Sunday. And then uh, most likely after Sunday or into Monday, we'll most likely get down to the numbers that are, are more manageable and then start moving forward. Idaho has their training camp, I believe, starting on Monday or Tuesday. So we have to be fair to, to, to that camp. Do you envision uh, a number of guys, a couple, maybe a handful of guys from tonight also playing on Sunday? Yeah, you know what? depends on our numbers here and uh, what happens tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon in the game with Dallas. Uh, we're just trying to balance our numbers so we don't tax players too much, obviously. But uh, Monday will be a day off, so we'll have a day of rest. And, and we want to evaluate our team. And uh, Sunday, you'll most likely see a lineup pretty close to what we're going to start the season with. So you'll get a good feel for uh, what we're going to be about. Have you had any? Have you had any further conversations about potential for Brendan Dillon or Cody Eakin to figure into Sunday's lineup? Um, you know what, that's uh, that's what not for me to decide, but uh, whatever they tell me, I'll uh, I'll put the lineup on the board. You'll be uh, behind the bench tomorrow or watching? What's what's your role uh, tomorrow? I'll be, I'll be helping out behind the bench tomorrow. I'll be uh, the guy giving out the water and that. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, I, I think the, the coaching staff's going to look after running the bench, and I'll be one of the assistant coaches helping out.